Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today marks the start of an epic adventure ahead. My AMG GT Black Series is heading to the United States of America and today we're going to be dropping it off to be loaded into a container. It is the last drive of a brief return back to the UK. Having been out with it in the Middle East, it wasn't all that long ago that I drove this car at Yas Marina, the F1 circuit in Abu Dhabi. It's been back here and now it is heading to another continent. It will be the first of the Schmimobiles to ever go to three continents, of course being based here in Europe, having been out to the Middle East, and now, like the Ford GT did, heading to the USA. One of my favorite trips I ever did was with that car, but I took it across the whole of the country to so many different places, including Car Week, which is of course where we're going to be going with the Solar Beam Yellow Beast. We're going to be heading out, starting in Florida, potentially for a rapid fire trip across the country, but there's a lot more to talk about in terms of that trip, but also what's going to be happening later in the year and the plans ahead with it to enjoy the ultimate road trip, to take this car out to the USA, the reverse of my GT500, which is currently on the way in this direction. Yeah, this is going to be pretty good fun. Today, though, we need to get it ready because I've got to get it over to the port. It's got to get loaded up. We've got to get everything ready and we've got to go because time is running against us. A last drive in the UK before it heads to the United States. Sending a car to another continent is not the most simple of things. Firstly, you have to prepare a few things. And I talked about this with the GT500 when I dropped it off where I'm going to be collecting this car, and you have to have very low fuel. Ideally, you'd have the car cleaned and ready. You have to take out anything from the car that didn't come with the car per se, or that you can send with it, all to do with the customs and that side of it, as you can imagine. So this is currently post track day with supercar driver, the secret meet up at Donington Park, fully cleaned up, with about half a tank at the moment, but we've got 100 miles or so to get down to Southampton, the port where the car will be sailing out of. It is looking magnificent, and just how this paint looked amazing in the sunshine of Dubai, it's gonna look amazing in the sunshine of Florida, of California, and of everything else in store ahead of us. Now, one thing to touch on, wheels and tires. As I have discussed, well, when we were at the track day, these Cup 2Rs don't have a huge amount of tread left. They have about three millimeters, so they are still completely legal. But if you're driving in really bad weather or it's cold, they're not a great set of tires for everyday driving. So when they're finished, I'll change them out there, probably for a regular set of Cup 2s, which would be a little bit more all season friendly, but we've tidied everything up. It's done about five and a half thousand miles now. I'd like to do many thousands more out in the US. If we come around, just pop open the boot, the trunk for a moment, better start using the US lingo. Back here, you can send, for example, the SeaTac Smart Charger. We might need that depending where it's going to be parked. First aid kit, instructions, but basically you send it completely empty. Now, the biggest thing I'm looking forward to about having this car in the US, as opposed to the Ford GT when that went over, is that that car has no luggage space, which meant that using it to travel distances was a nightmare because I couldn't have two people without a support car, a chase car or something else. And the logistics of that were very complicated. The GT500, like with this, was much easier. But in here, thankfully, you can fit two carry-on sized bags plus some soft bags up here behind the titanium roll cage. So we can use this car for some journeys up here. We've got the Yas Marina track day pass. We've got the Yas Marina F1 parking passes. These are on the other way around. We've also got the SCD Donington Park. This was a, an event I went to with Supercars Majlis. I suspect we're gonna have a few more stickers on here at the end of this journey, but this is a car that I feel very, very closely attached to. I was lucky to be part of the original launch, you might remember, of the GT Black Series. I've enjoyed so many miles with my SLS Black Series and also with my C63 Black Series. So the GT Black Series is a car that I know I'm keeping forever. That's why of all of the cars I own, it is the perfect car to take out on this journey. A one-off as a right-hand drive solar beam yellow car after doing the full spray with more power than standard, with a little bit more noise than standard, and a car that it's just so fun to drive. And that's what I'm looking forward to so much about all of this. Anyway, we're gonna be setting off in a moment. I need to just plan the last couple of things, make sure that when we get there, we can wipe it down and hopefully it will all be clean and tidy when I get to the other end. Although probably because it takes at least a couple of weeks, if not a month, we might need to just sort it out at the other side as well. But yeah, it's time to get this ready because it's going to America. <laughs>
I tell you what, it is a beautiful day. Complete blue skies, lots of traffic, but that's pretty much the norm here. It's actually saying it's 29 and a half degrees Celsius. That's something like 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That's actually decently warm, which is lovely for the last drive in the car. I do need to get a little bit of fuel out of it. So we currently have about 70 miles to go and it's still showing just over half a tank of fuel. And that needs to be normally about an eighth or at least under a quarter for shipping. You can't ship a car with a full tank of fuel. It's the basically flat rule. And if it goes by air, it needs to be really kind of down towards the very last dregs in the tank, which gives you that little scare at the other end as to whether you're gonna be able to find a fuel, or in this case, gas station in time. Exactly the same as we had with the GT500. But the car is, you know, one of my favorite from my garage for so many reasons. It's such an enjoyable car to drive. It will be the first time I have had a right-hand drive car in the USA, which is also going to be a slightly peculiar experience to begin with. Um, I think pulling up at valets in certain places, that's going to be quite a confusion. Although I do know a few people who have some right-hand drive things out there, like cars you can only get in the Japanese market or that kind of thing. This traffic is super annoying, as you can probably tell. It does give me an opportunity for some little accelerations though, and attempts at draining out some fuel just because some pops and bangs. But you know what, when it comes to this thing, this car has never hiccuped in the slightest way. I feel like I can depend upon it for a road trip and I intend to do a lot of miles in the USA with this. So if you're wondering why I haven't taken, for example, the Senna. The Senna has next to no luggage space. It's very expensive if anything happens or gets broken and reliability is a big thing. The German cars just kind of get on with the miles and tend to be quite unfussy about it. Great for road trips in this case, great for track driving as well. So that's why the, yeah, back to a standstill again. That's why not the Senna. You know, I did actually think about sending the Ford GT again, but the same thing with road trip luggage. So no SF90, no STO for the same reason. If the SLS was completely ready, I would give that a thought as well. It's a left-hand drive after all. It'd be a great car to take for it. But this car is so me. I enjoy it so much and I feel so like just all around right at the wheel, just absolutely right at the wheel of it. So that's why, you know, I have to, I have to take this car. I, I just, it's, it's the one to use for this purpose. And given I've taken it to the Middle East as well, and you know, drove a couple of thousand miles, not doing this, not just sitting in traffic jams, but at Yas Marina, at the Dubai Auto Drive, up Jebel Jace, two loads of different events with Supercars Magilis and other things out there. To be able to add to that and take it to the US as well, is just the next step on. So this car will arrive in Florida, in theory, about a week into August, which gives me something like 10 days to two weeks to get it to the other coast. Now, I could just transport it across and I might run out of time and that would be what I have to do, but I do quite like driving. So at the moment, I'm thinking to do effectively a Miami all the way to LA adventure ahead of car week and then do a drive up to car week and then from car week continue who knows where but i want to go back and forwards a little bit because i've got so much coming on going on here that i need to come home for basically i can't just stay away for a prolonged period for three months or something like i did with the gt500 tour so hopefully we can do some fun things in different parts of the country but obviously la i'd like to go visit some places that i haven't yet stopped in the US, so maybe up north a little bit more, perhaps up towards Washington State, Seattle, uh, maybe even pop over to Canada, go to Vancouver, a little bit more along the northern states. I'd like to also go down to Arizona. Uh, I've stopped in uh, Phoenix and Scottsdale before, but it'd be nice to be down in that part of the country. I'd love to catch up with some of the YouTubers that we know from my channel and others as well on my adventures. And to be honest, who really knows? Go with the wind, see where the world takes us. Now, one thing you might be wondering about is what about the Zenvo? What about the Zenvo TSRS? Now, the Zenvo is not far off, and I'd very much love to have it out in the USA as well. That is the dream. I just don't know if we can do everything in time, if we can do everything in time for the main event, for the main, you know, Quail Monterey Car Week activities. So we're going to have to wait a little bit to see what can happen on that front. Um, you know, shipping takes time. That would probably have to go by air freight. Yeah, we're really not going anywhere here, are we? But hey, this is better for burning off some fuel at least. Look on the bright side. 
Um, so if I can get it there, that would be amazing. Just imagine this and the purple together in the sunshine. It would just be absolutely phenomenal. But the same as bringing this back from Dubai. I wanted to get it back and hopefully have it out in time to go to the US for Gumball 3000. Sometimes these things just take longer than you expect. So let's hope there aren't any major delays even on the shipping. Also, let's hope that this opens up because I'm very anxious about time right now. To get this to the port drop off in time, looking at my nav, we've only got about 15 minutes in hand. And I also need to pull in because I'd like to inflate the tires slightly more. They're all normal road temps but knowing it's going to be sitting in a container for a while i'd like them to be a bit higher so that's something i need to work on also ac's gone off for some reason there we go that's a bit better get some cold air coming through because we need it we've got 30 degrees now okay let's see if this opens up and let's see if we're going to make it today we're out of the most intense part of the traffic but the problem is i need to keep basically dropping a gear doing this it's very deja vu like with the GT500 because we're still above half a tank and we've only got about 55 miles to go and I'm a little bit concerned by that. So it's just down a gear. Try and burn off some fuel, rinse and repeat and keep going and hope that we're going to get it down enough before we get there. I feel really bad but I've got to do it because I can't leave the car with more than a quarter of a tank. Uh, we're coming up to another bit of traffic, so it's going to going to get harder again. It's interesting that uh, pickup or SUV, sorry, on that trailer. Don't know what that plate is. Unusual. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to have to come back in that as well. Oh, Lusso. There was a blue GTC for Lusso just there. TDF blue. There we go, nice. <laughs> One thing to do is to inflate up the tires. So I'm gonna inflate the front tires to something like halfway between the low and high speed stuff. So about 33 front and maybe 37 back, something like that. So let me go and get all of my valve caps off. 33 front, 38 back, because it's basically gonna be strapped down for a month. So when you do that, you definitely need to make sure that it's all going to be at a decent pressure because if they stay too low we run the risk of a problem at the other end um, so get these off go and tap a card and get this inflated and um, yeah go from there hopefully all will be well present a card you're going to give us some yeah let's do the rear ones first up to 37 38. Let's get this on. What is it at the moment? 33. So yeah, we needed a bit in them. This will just take a couple of moments, then we'll be back on the road. The good news is that we are now a smidge under a quarter of a tank, which is what we needed. And I was a little bit anxious it wouldn't happen, although we have just been going down a hill, which might change it slightly. Anyway, the bad news is that even here on the M3, near to Southampton, we've found more traffic. I feel like I've been driving so obnoxiously and it makes me feel really awkward. You could drain it out, but we're so close. It's one of those like just drop a gear and, you know, use some revs and hey, it sounds cool. So what's not to like? Uh, just, yeah, need to know that it's under a quarter. Although I did just have to speak with the shippers and I think it should be okay. This car's actually going with my car import. My car import being the company that imported my SLS Black Series and are currently importing my GT500. So the shipping of it physically to the UK plus all of the conversions. But obviously through their network and connections in this world, they've been able to help me with all the paperwork, with everything and getting the container. And talking containers, that is a 20 foot container, which is what one of we're going to be having for this car to be strapped down inside. You get 20 foots, the short ones like that, or 40 foots, which you can share between two cars. And it's quite interesting actually, because if you take a 40 foot container, you pay the same port customs and handling fees, roughly speaking, there's a small upcharge, but can obviously take double the cargo. So you could technically put two cars in a 40 foot. And I considered that because it only takes the price up by about 40% extra over what you're paying anyway to ship a car. So maybe next time that'll be the way to look into doing it. But for the time being, it's super expensive to ship a car. Put it this way, sending this car to the US now by boat, which takes a month, is costing about the same 
as three years ago when I flew my Ford GT in a 747 with insurance for a car worth two and a half times the price of this. So for some perspective, shipping at the moment is crazy expensive. Back then to ship would have been about a third of the price of what it is now. It's just mad to think how, I guess there's a lot of demand and also different routes. So anything to the USA is really expensive versus anything away from the USA. So this is more than triple the price to ship the GT500 back to the UK. And obviously uh, insurance is a big difference because this car's worth maybe five times the price of the GT500, something in that kind of ballpark. But the price to actually do this in the US direction is ridiculous and has been a major point to try and work out because I'm not gonna lie, it's really very, very expensive for just taking the car. So you might say, why not just rent one there? Renting a car, you'd never be able to rent something like this over there. You'd never be able to make that work. Um, why not just drive cars that I'm lucky enough to borrow from manufacturers from time to time as a Bentley Conti GT, sales on by. Um, that would also be a pretty cool option, not gonna lie but there's something so special about taking your own car and the memories you build with it and the fun you have with it, but also being able to bring this car that I suppose many of you guys in the USA have seen through the videos on the channel to bring this to events across America. So that's you know one of the dreams for me and it's just unbelievable to be able to, to do that, even if it means that this car won't meet the GT500 for another six months or something. Who knows how long this will stay exactly in the US. Another interesting thing is I've taken away one of my citrus colored cars from the garage, but when this comes home, there are actually gonna be more because the GT500 will be there, the Amira will be there, and stay tuned for something else that we're gonna be talking about in the coming days to touch on a lot more in a lot more detail. Anyway, hopefully this doesn't take too long. Even if it does, we're burning down some fuel. We're gonna get there about nine minutes before closing time, which is a lucky break. We're only three miles away. And yeah, the last couple of miles before this goes to America. This is that moment where you're never 100% sure, but I see caravans and things being loaded into containers. So we're definitely in the right place to drop this off, ready to be loaded. Kind of crazy, really. Um, I think they were at a whole loading packaging distribution area. Um, which is super cool. So we'll park up somewhere, go do all the paperwork at that side of it, and then take it from there. The fun thing here is that's actually my container, TCLU2684132. I know that from the code. That means that now everyone knows it's that. Let's hope it makes it safely. <laughs> this is really fun. What timing. We are literally here with the container, ready to be loaded up. We're gonna be able to see my car being strapped down, closed up, until the next time we see it is opening that in Florida. This is a beautiful afternoon. This is actually quite crazy. I always wanted to see a car being put into a container. I wasn't able to see it in Dubai because I left before the car was loaded and I was in the US when the car arrived back in the UK. So I haven't been able to see it before, but today we're actually gonna see what happens and how they do this and how exactly it all goes in, gets strapped down. It's on the container completely on its own. So there's nothing to damage it or hit it. Just stays in the container. That container gets transported on the back of a truck over towards the port where it then gets loaded onto the back of the container ship. And then I don't know the exact route of the container ship at this stage, but then it gets unloaded at the other end and reverse the process taken to a yard to be able to be unpacked from the container and we get the car out again. It's super simple, but really cool to be able to see it. So let's kind of learn this as we go. Container doors are open, bit of a ramp to make it easier to load it in. This is where my car will be traveling. Just have to check the floor for any nails or anything that's left in there. Just while they line that up. Hopefully it's not too low to make it in. And then should just be loaded and yeah, simple really. Right, time to put this inside. Now I've taken my shoes off because I'm gonna have to climb out in a moment. Let's um, do this, carefully does it. Mirrors in, dead straight we go, little bit left, into park, and this is the not so elegant way to climb out, but exhaust valves are closed, I'm ready to step out of here, kind of like this. There we go. Woo. 
I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty hot and sweaty in here. We've just opened up the bonnet because given the car has a lithium battery, what you don't want to do is let it go flat during the crossing and then try and jump it. You shouldn't really jump lithium batteries it kind of messes them up. So we're just getting some tools to disconnect the battery. I asked about the key. The key for the car actually gets attached and held just inside here. That's where it will travel, um, simply at the side, which makes it nice and easy. And the windows have to be a fraction open as well. But let's try and squeeze in and see what we can do. Oh, we've got a visitor. You're not gonna go in the container. <laughs> the car will still need to be strapped down, but for the moment, door closed. And yeah, farewell, until next time. That's it then, or at least that's it for now. It will take, as I said, I think three or four weeks before that's out there and certainly until I'm out there as well to receive it at the other end, but really quite exciting. The car's in the container, they'll seal it up overnight so it's all safe until they've strapped it down properly because it's right at the end of the day. It will be strapped down properly, the key travels with the car. I might take the spare one just in case, we shall see. But it's that easy. Battery disconnected so that it doesn't go flat. And yeah, nothing else to worry about. It seems strange that in a way it's also logical it's not crazy to do that process i mean you'd expect so because shipping globally is a massive industry but it still seems a little bit surreal to have loaded it up into the container here ready to go across the atlantic ocean anyway that's it for now no gt black series on the channel for a few weeks unfortunately and it'll be a while until it's back at home but for the time being it's on the move it's ready to go Super exciting. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching as always guys. I appreciate your support an awful lot and I look forward to sharing this journey with you very soon. That's it, I'll see you then. Cheers.